Hello, class seven student. This is your science teacher, Ben, and I'll be taking your science. And today we'll kickstart with our first chapter, that is nutrition in plants, okay? You, so you all know that food is very essential for all of us, right? Food, who don't love food? Without food, um, I don't think we'll be able to survive. We can't survive, right? So let me tell you that at home, kitchen is the place where doing morning or evening, Kitchen is the busiest place at home, right? Because food ha we have to prepare the food, and that is done in the kitchen, right? So same, same for even plants. Plants, they have to prepare food, okay? So now the first thing, uh, before we start with nutrition in plants, I want you to get familiar with two words. That is autotrophs. Autotrophs. And heterotrophs. Heterotrophs. Clear, students? So what is autotrophs? Auto means self. And then troughs means it's derived from trophos. Clear? Which means nourishment. So self-nourishment. So uh, the, mode of no, uh, the mode of nutrition where the organism can make food by themselves. Clear? is known as autotrophs, self-nourishment, where they don't depend on other, they don't have to harm other, but they can prepare their own food. It's known as autotrophs. So I don't think we human beings, we fall under this category, autotrophs, right? Now let's talk about heterotrophs. Heterotroph, hetero means other, okay, other. The word hetero means other. And troph is derived from trophos, so other nourishment. So the mode of nutrition in which organisms have to depend on other plants uh, are known as heterotrophs. So that means we human beings, we fall under these heterotrophs because we have to depend on plants for our nutrition. Clear? And plants are autotrophs because they prepare. They are, they are, I should say they are way smarter than humans because they prepare their food by themselves, and it's amazing, right? And today, we will discuss how plants prepare their food. Clear? The same as we prepare the food in the kitchen, the plants prepare their food. Clear? Now, but uh, autotrophs, plants are autotrophs, but some plants are also heterotrophs. And it's going to be interesting, which also we'll discuss in the latter part of the chapter. Okay, so now let's talk about these autotrophs and how plants prepare their food, okay? How plants prepare their food. So the leaves, the leaf, the leaf part of the plant is known as the food factory of, the food factory of the plant, clear? The food factory. Factory, when I say it's somehow, uh, it, it's like a storehouse where everything is stored, right? So the leaf is known as the food factories for the plants. Now, for science, you should have a good imagination skills, clear? So I want you all to imagine a plant. Any form of plant you can imagine, clear? Any form of plant you, you can imagine, clear? So now, leaf, I'm sure now leaf, a picture of leaf just can pop up in your mind. So leaf is, where the food is prepared. So now, to prepare a food, the plants, they need water and minerals. Clear? Water and minerals. Water, I'm sure you all know water and minerals. And where are these water and minerals present? They are present inside the soil. Clear? Inside the soil, there will be lots of soil and minerals. Inside the, locally, let's say, locally, Inside the mati, you'll get pani and all. Clear? So now, uh, root, okay? You, you all know the root, right? I told you to imagine roots, okay? The root, with the help of root, they absorb water and mineral from the soil. Clear? It's amazing, right? So with the help of this root, they absorb the water and minerals from the soil. And then it is taken all the way up to the stem, the branch, and finally they reach the leaf. Clear. But how do they reach, like from, after absorbing uh, from the root, how do they reach, like, 
way up till the leaf. How, how do they reach still up like in the leaf? Through the help of the vessels, okay, vessels. Vessels is nothing but it's like a pipe. Have you ever seen a water supply where water runs like through the pipe? So it's the same thing you have to imagine, okay, vessels, they run like a pipe. So all throughout, the water will be transported from the root, then to the stem, then to the branch, and finally will land up in the leaf. So now we have water and, pre water and minerals already present, right? So these are like the ingredients, okay? These are like the ingredients for plants to prepare the food. So now we already have water and minerals. Okay, water and minerals are there in the leaf. Okay, now the second thing they need is carbon dioxide. Clear? Carbon dioxide is also a major ingredient for plants for the, their preparation. But how do they take carbon dioxide from that leaf? Now, if you observe the leaf carefully, clear, you'll see a pores. P-O-R-E-S. You'll see many pores. Pores, for some people, if you don't know pores, locally it is, you'll see, let's say you'll find, okay, uh, let's say chenda, clear. So you'll find many chenda, chenda pores, clear, pores. So you'll see many tiny, tiny, tiny pores in the leaves, clear. So through these pores, carbon dioxide enter in the leaf, clear. So I'm sure now you are clear with this very word pores. So these are very tiny and they, you'll find many pores. So now carbon dioxide is already there. Carbon dioxide is already there. Okay, now we have water, mineral, and carbon dioxide. Two kids, uh, the carbon dioxide came like through the pores. So we have all the three ingredients now. Again, now we have the most important one that is sunlight. Sunlight, clear. So uh, before, before I talk about the sunlight or photosynthesis, now let me uh, say like more about these pores. These pores, these tiny, tiny pores are surrounded by guard cells, okay, guard cells. And uh, they are known as stomata, okay? So you have to keep this in mind and you can also note down this very word stomata, clear? Stomata is S-T-O-M-A-T-A, -A -A, stomata, clear? So these pores are surrounded by guard cells. They are surrounded by guard cells and they are known as stomata, clear? Okay, so I'm sure this is clear. Now we have water, mineral, and carbon dioxide. Now the most important is they need sunlight, okay? They need a light energy. Without that, they cannot prepare the food. And during the dark, uh, during night time, or if there is no light, plant, they cannot prepare a food. They need uh, sunlight by any means to prepare the food. So now how do they trap this sunlight? How do they trap the sunlight? Now in the leaf, why the leaf is green in color? Because there are many green pigments present in the leaf. And those green pigments are all known as, very important, keep this in mind, students. These green pigments, they are kind of cells, and these are known as chlorophyll. Clear? Okay, I'll repeat it again, chlorophyll. Okay, so these green pigments are called chlorophyll, and you'll see many chlorophyll present in the leaf. And with the help of this chlorophyll, these green pigments, these cells, they trap the sunlight, okay? They trap the sunlight. That's how they take sunlight. So light, so plants cannot prepare their food without the help of light. So light means photo, okay? Light means photo. Light means photo, okay? Okay, so light means photo. And now synthesis, synthesis. Synthesis means it's to prepare, preparation, clear? To prepare your food, you can, you can simply write to prepare your food, but in science term we use synthesis, clear? So to prepare, clear? So now this is how plants prepare their food. 
clear? So I'm sure now you're all clear. What, what ingredients do we need, do plants need to prepare their food? Water, mineral from the soil, clear? And they are transported up like from root till the leaf with the help of vessels, clear? Now we have carbon dioxide. How do they get an entry? entry? Through the pores, tiny pores present in the leaves, clear? And these pores are surrounded by guard cells and they are known as stomata, clear? And now the most, most important one, sunlight. How do they trap this sunlight? With the help of, very important word, chlorophyll. Those are the green pigments present in the leaves, clear? So if you are asked many times in a, uh, many times in the exam, they ask the ingredients, how plants prepare their food. So you can mention all these ingredients that we have discussed just now, clear? Okay, so uh, now with the help of water, mineral, carbon dioxide and sunlight, they give us, they, uh, they, they give carbohydrates in the form of starch, clear? So that's the food, carbohydrate in the form of starch. And, uh, and then they also give us plants during this process, okay, during their preparation, they give us one important energy, okay, it's released. What is that? Oxygen is released, okay? Oxygen is released, oxygen gas is released. So plants are very helpful to us and plants are very smarter, way smarter than human beings, right? Because without depending on anyone, they prepare their own food. And I have, I have observed that in many schools because during uh, June 5th, in 5th June, in World Environment Day, uh, we see newspaper, many schools, they plant, they give, they give a photo of their uh, planting a tree or in school magazines, we'll see like eco club in schools, biodiversity or anything, you'll see tree plantations, clear? Yeah. So plants are very helpful and plants uh, are very helpful to human beings and to all the animals because we are directly or indirectly dependent on, uh, dependent on plants, right? So you may say, okay, yes, we are dependent on plants, right? Fruits, vegetables, from where do we get plants? Clear. But you may be thinking that, no, we are not dependent only on plants. I like milk. I like egg as well. But let me tell you that Egg, from where do we get, right? Uh, milk, from where do we get? Milk, we get it from cow, right? Cow, milk, we get it from cow. But cow has to depend on the grass, the plants, right? That means we are directly or indirectly dependent on plants, clear? Okay, so I'm sure now you're clear with these outer troughs and then how plants prepare their own food. Now, the next topic we will talk about other mode of nutrition in plants, clear? Other mode of nutrition in plants. So there is a plant called cascata, clear? Cascata, I'll write this for you here. Cascata, clear? Cascata is a plant and I'm sure you have seen this in your life, okay? In, uh, you will find this cascata plant anywhere. And in a beautiful uh, state, our state like Nagland, you will find this plant, clear? So this plant, okay, now you imagine, this plant, if you are not familiar with this cascata plant, uh, uh, cascata is kind of a uh, wiry, it's, it's kind of a wiry branch-like structure, yellow in color, clear? Yellow in color, it's a wiry shape, clear? And they, uh, you'll find them uh, in a plant, in a tree, hanging. You'll find them hanging in a tree. I'm sure you have observed that. Yellow thing is kind of a wire shape, and then you'll see them hanging in a tree. Clear? So this cascata, they don't have what? They don't have chlorophyll. They are yellow in color. They don't have chl chlorophyll. Then they cannot prepare their own food, right? Then that, that means they cannot even, since, See, they don't have chlorophyll, they cannot even trap sunlight. And plants, in order to prepare food, they need to trap sunlight, right? So cascata cannot prepare their own food because they don't have a chlorophyll. So what they do is they depend on the host plant. Host, the plant in which it is climbing, 
the tree. So that means the tree is playing the role of a horse. There, because cascata, the yellow tiny wire shape, is hanging on this tree. Clear? So what they do is that they, they deprive the host plant of the valuable nutrients and they get their nutrients like through this host. Clear? So they are dependent on the host for their nutrition. So we can say that cascata is a parasite. Clear? Parasite. Parasite is those living organisms which have to depend on the other living organisms for their survival. So that means Cascata is, we can say that it's a heterotroph because he's depending on other plant. Or we can also say it's a parasite. Clear? So please keep this plant uh, in mind. And you can also note this Cascata uh, in your notebook. Okay, the word Cascata, remember this. Okay? Okay, and you get familiar with the word host. Clear? Host is where this cascata is living, clear? Where this cascata is depending, clear? And this cascata is depriving this host of the valuable nutri nutrition, clear? So this cascata is also acting as a parasite, okay? Now, uh, students, we have uh, finished with this other mode of, the first part of other mode of nutrition in plants, that is cascata, right? Cascata kind of a heterotroph. So the next one will be an insectivorous plant. Clear? Keep this in mind. Uh, let me repeat it again, insectivorous plant. So what are these insectivorous plants? These are plants, for, uh, these are plants which feed on insects. Have you ever imagined that plants, uh, plants having like insects for their survival? Okay, so I'll give you the name. It's a pitcher plant. Okay, pitcher. It's a jack-like structure. Now I'll just draw a rough structure. It's a. Say this. If this is a leaf, then you will see this plant. It will be a jack-like structure. Clear. And then they have an op opening and a closing uh, because on the top, there on the apex. They form a lead, which uh, acts as an opening and closing for this jack-like structure. And this plant is very common, and they are known as pitcher plant. Pitcher plant. Clear? Pitcher plant. And the insects are trapped inside this jack-like structure. And, when, uh, and once when the insect is trapped inside this jack-like structure, uh, Insect, what they do is uh, they take the juice from the inside. They, they take the juice from the inside and then the, insect are, uh, the insects are killed. Clear? So in that way, this pitcher plant are known as insectivorous plant because in this way, the, they, are, uh, they are having these insects. They, are, they already trap the insects. Clear? Okay, so for for the insectivorous uh, plant, you, you should remember this pitcher plant or a jack-like structure, a jack, J-U-G, jack-like structure, clear? Okay, students, uh, so this will be all for today. Uh, let me quickly give you a recap for, of what we have studied today. That is autotrophs and heterotrophs, preparation of food in plants, and the other mode of nutrition in plants, which is very important. And we have discussed two important plants, that is pitcher plant, which is also an insectivorous plant, clear? And the second one is uh, cascata, which is an heterotrophic plant or a parasite. So please keep this in mind. There are lots, there are very, very interesting topics coming up like for class seven science. All the topics are very practical and very interesting. And together, we are going to have a lot of fun. So to be continued in the next class. Thank you so much, students.